So, uh, in this lecture, we are going to look at um, uh, the application uh, of um, uh, first law to uh, combustion systems, basically uh, first law and later on we will look at uh, application of uh, entropy balance also to uh, combustion systems. In uh, both uh, cases, we actually will uh, look at uh, steady flow uh, uh, situations, uh, but the as I said um, uh, before, uh, application of um, um, first law uh, to combustion systems which are non-flow systems is really uh, straightforward. Many examples or at least um, uh, one example of that is given in the textbook. So, I uh, uh, urge you to uh, look at the textbook for that example because all the examples that we are going to work out here uh, will be steady flow uh, examples. Okay. Now, before we can actually uh, uh, start uh, uh, applying steady flow energy equation to combustion systems, we need to uh, uh, revisit uh, the concept of uh, enthalpy as we have uh, done it so far in the previous course as well as up to now in this course. Okay. So, you may recall that uh, specific enthalpy uh, H is defined as U plus PV where U is the specific internal energy. Okay, and PV, as you know, uh, is equal to RT as long as we uh, uh, take the um, uh, gas to be um, uh, perfect gas, which obeys the ideal gas equation of state. Okay, now the specific internal energy uh, for ideal gases is related to the modes of energy storage in molecules. Okay, this is something that we uh, that I discussed in detail in the uh, first level uh, thermodynamics course. So, you um, uh, if you are not familiar with this uh, this idea, I suggest that you uh, kind of you look at the video uh, on uh, pure substances modes of energy storage uh, for ideal gases. Okay. So, um, uh, you know in um, in compact terms the modes of energy storage in molecules uh, uh, are um, translation, rotation and vibration. Uh, these are the modes of energy storage that you will see in general. Okay. For a monatomic gas for example, there is only translation, rotation and vibration are not, uh, are not available. For diatomic and polyatomic gases, definitely rotation and vibration are modes of energy storage. Okay. Most importantly, the energy stored in these modes is dependent only on the temperature of the gas. Okay. Um, and such a gas is uh, uh, typically uh, called uh, <coughs> thermally perfect, okay, because its internal energy is dependent only on the uh, temperature of the gas. Okay. So, for our purposes, we have actually simplified this in some instances, some more and said that you know the, uh, uh, the specific heat capacity Cv or Cp is also a constant and uh, which does not change with temperature that led to the so called calorically perfect gas model, but that is not necessary. We have also done calculations in this course earlier uh, using variable uh, Cp for, for air and, and so on. So, uh, that is uh, that is a simplification not necessarily a limitation. Okay. So, um, thermally perfect is adequate, thermally perfect plus ideal gas equation of state is what we uh, prefer to uh, use in this uh, in this course. Okay. Now, we can uh, fully account for energy that is stored in these modes uh, because it is only temperature dependent. And in the case of pure substances which are not ideal gases such as um, uh, water for instance and refrigerant, we uh, resorted to the tabulated form of internal energy because there the specific internal energy is a function of both temperature and pressure. Okay? It is a function of temperature only for uh, thermally perfect gases. Okay? Now, if you, um, uh, if you look at the internal energy, uh, it is made up generally we look only at the uh, translation energy stored in translation, rotation and vibrational modes. Even vibrational modes are not excited until the temperature until and unless the temperature is very high, okay? greater than let us say uh, 1500, 1600 Kelvin or so. Okay? Now, normally the energy that is stored in the bonds, uh, chemical bonds that make up the molecules is not accounted for. It is somewhat like dead storage in a reservoir or dam. Okay? And we need not really account for it as long as there are no chemical reactions. 
because uh, uh, for example, we may have O2, N2 and CO2 forming an ideal gas mixture or we may have O2 and N2, it is then mixed with CO2 to form an ideal gas mixture. In all these cases, uh, CO2 remains as CO2, O2 remains as O2 and N2 remains as N2. Okay. Or if you uh, consider psychrometry for example, we had moist air which was uh, treated as, an, uh, as a mixture of two ideal gases air and water vapor. But the composition um, of the water vapor and the air or the individual components in the mixture remain the same. Okay. Which means that the energy stored in the bonds remains intact and we need not really account for that. Okay. Now, once chemical reactions beginning uh, or chemical reactions begin to take place, uh, we could have a new uh, product species which are formed from the reactant species, which means that bonds in the reactant species are broken and uh, new bonds are formed to create new product species. Okay. Which means that the energy that was stored in the bonds in the uh, reactant species and the energy that uh, goes into uh, the bonds in the product species all has to be accounted for. Okay, all have to be accounted for. So, and that is what um, we are going to do first. Okay, so this means that the uh, specific enthalpy, the uh, the expressions that we use have to be modified. Okay. The definition itself does not change. The definition for specific enthalpy is always H equal to U plus PV. So, we need to uh, carefully uh, look at the uh, expression that we have been using and modify it so that we can take into account the energy that is contained in the bonds. Okay. Let us see how we do that. So, for any chemical species, the um, uh, enthalpy at a given temperature T um, is defined to be the sum of the enthalpy of formation. Notice that we are encountering this term for the first time. So, the enthalpy of formation is denoted HF0 of T ref. Okay. F refer, refers to formation and the superscript refers to standard state. Standard state is 298 Kelvin and 1 atmosphere pressure. So, uh, the enthalpy at a given temperature is defined as a sum of the enthalpy of formation and a sensible enthalpy denoted delta H bar. Okay? And again, uh, you may recall from the previous course that an over bar is used to denote the fact that this particular quantity is measured on a per k mole basis, not per kg basis, but per k mole basis. So, the over bar is used here also. So, H bar of T which is the specific enthalpy on a molar basis. So, this means that this has units of for instance kilojoule per k mole and not the kilojoule per kg that we are familiar with. Okay? So, H bar of T is the sum of the enthalpy of formation plus sensible enthalpy. Notice that sensible enthalpy is a function only of temperature. Okay. So, what we have been doing so far, what we have been calling enthalpy so far is actually the sensible enthalpy. So, this is what we have been calling enthalpy so far, but enthalpy is actually the sum of sensible enthalpy plus enthalpy of formation. And as long as there are no chemical reactions, we can pretty much ignore this and work only with the sensible enthalpy. Okay. Now, sensible enthalpy is a, uh, is a function of temperature and for combustion calculations, what uh, we will do is uh, use a table for looking up values of uh, sensible enthalpy. Of course, um, a curve fit polynomial for Cp bar may also be used and we can then evaluate H as Cp, uh, the sensible enthalpy H bar as Cp bar times uh, Cp bar times T that is possible but we will use tabulated values of the enthalpy itself in this uh, in this particular course okay so that is the most important thing we need to account for uh, the energy that is contained in the bonds of the molecules so the chemical species when we are doing combustion calculations because uh, reactant species uh, are being uh, dissociated or bonds in the reactant species are being broken and bonds are being formed, new bonds are being formed to create product species. So, basically the enthalpy of formation uh, is nothing but the energy that is, is more or less the energy that is contained in the bonds or it is actually the energy that is required to form the species from its constituent elements.
ok. And it is more or less very close to being the energy that is contained in the bonds as we will show in a minute. But strictly speaking, it is defined as the energy that is required to form the species from its constituent elements, ok. Let us look at how uh, the um, uh, energy contained in the bonds, how well this approximates the enthalpy of formation, ok. So, here uh, is a table containing bond energy, so uh, different types of bonds. It is a very uh, short list and it contains bonds that we encounter uh, customarily. Okay. So, you see single bond HH, single bond CC, uh, double bond, uh, triple bond CC and so on, okay. uh, double bond CO and so on and so forth. So, these are bond energies in the gas phase. So, let us uh, note a few things about the bond energy. Bond energy is defined as the energy that is required to break the bond. In other words, if I have uh, let us say um, a vessel which contains H2. H2 molecule is nothing but HH, uh, the uh, single bond HH. So, if I have a, a container uh, with H2, then if I supply energy or the energy that I must supply to break uh, the bond or dissociate H2 into two atoms of H is called the bond energy. So, that is the energy that is used to that is required to break the bond and dissociate the molecule and convert it into its constituent atoms. And our sign convention for uh, heat given to a system is positive, which is why this has a positive sign cons uh, consistent with the sign convention that we have been following in thermodynamics. Okay. If for instance, we have a container with uh, let us say uh, atoms of H and we want to form uh, let us say molecules of H, then energy must be removed from the system and we must form the bond. Okay. So, that means energy is released when uh, two atoms of H combine to form a molecule of H2. That then in that case energy would be negative in keeping with our sign convention. Okay. Bond energy for uh, the double bond are higher than those of the single bond. For instance, if you see here uh, <coughs> single bond CO has a bond energy of 0.36 times 10 raise to 6, whereas a double bond CO has a bond energy of 0 0.804 times 10 raise to 6. A single bond uh, CC has an energy of uh, 0 0.348 times 10 raise to 6, whereas a triple bond CC has an energy of 0.814 times 10 raise to 6. So, bond energy constitutes a major part of the energy contained in the molecule. We will not go into um, the details or nuances of this, but it constitutes a major part of the energy that is contained in the molecule. Okay? And which is why the bond energy uh, is very well approximated uh, or very well approximates the enthalpy of formation. Okay? Let us work out a, a couple of uh, examples to uh, indicate this. Determine the enthalpy of formation of gaseous methane uh, and acetylene. Let us, I will leave it to you as an exercise to do ethylene. Let us do gaseous methane and acetylene, ok. Assume the enthalpy of formation of carbon in the gas phase from the element carbon in the solid phase to be 0.7184 times 10 raise to 6 kJ per k mol. So, gaseous methane uh, contains 4 CH bonds. So, you may recall that gaseous methane CH4. Uh, looks like this. So, it contains 4 CH bonds. So, the 4 hydrogen atoms have to come from breaking down the uh, bonds in a hydrogen molecule. In other words, we uh, have to uh, make this reaction happen. So, to get the 4 hydrogen atoms. So, 2 hydrogen molecules have to be broken to get 4 hydrogen atoms. So, energy is, needs to be supplied for that. So, now uh, and the carbon here has to uh, go from the solid phase to the gaseous phase. So, energy has to be supplied to take the carbon in the solid phase to the gaseous phase. Now, we have a soup of atoms in the gas phase, carbon atoms and hydrogen atoms. So, uh, 4 hydrogen atoms will combine with the carbon atom through a CH, each through a CH bond. So, that will cause uh, energy to be released. So, now we put together all these uh, energies and then calculate the uh, enthalpy of formation approximately of CH4. Okay. So, 
here is the uh, energy that needs to be supplied to take carbon in the solid phase to carbon in the gas phase. Notice that this comes with the plus sign because we have to supply energy to do this. Okay? This term represents the energy that is required to take uh, to break down two molecules of hydrogen into four hydrogen atoms. Okay? Again, it is positive because we have to supply energy to do this. So, if you look at the uh, previous table, HH has a bond energy of 0.436. So, that is the energy that is required to break the bond uh, HH bond in a hydrogen atom. Okay? Now, the uh, formation of uh, 4 CH bonds requires this much energy with a negative sign. Again, notice that CH bond requires 0.413 times 10 raised to 6 or CH bond has a bond energy of 0.413 times 10 raised to 6, which means that I need to supply 0.413 times 10 raised to 6 uh, kilo joule per kilo mole to break a CH bond. To form a CH bond, I have to remove this much energy that is 0.413 times 10 raised to 6 kJ per k mole. So, or put alternatively, stated alternatively, when uh, a CH bond is formed from its constituent elements, 0.413 times 10 raised to 6 kJ per k mole of energy is released, okay, which is why this uh, goes in with a negative sign. So, if you sum it all up, we get uh, the uh, uh, bond energy contained in CH4 to be minus 61,600 kilojoule per k mole. Okay? The actual value is minus 74,000 kilojoule per kilo mole. It is reasonably close. Let us next uh, look at acetylene. So, acetylene contains, so if you recall, acetylene is C2H2. So, it contains a carbon carbon triple bond and two CH bonds, single bond. So, the two H atoms are, uh, are produced by breaking down one hydrogen molecule and the carbon, two carbon atoms have to be taken from uh, the solid phase to the gaseous phase. So, from this soup of atoms, one carbon carbon triple bond and two carbon hydrogen single bonds have to be formed. Okay? So, let us uh, calculate the energy associated with each of this bond breaking and bond forming. Okay? So, this is the energy that we need to supply to break the uh, bond or to dissociate a hydrogen molecule. This is the energy that we need to supply to take uh, two carbon atoms from the solid phase to the gaseous phase and both these terms uh, go with a plus sign. This is the energy that is released when uh, CC triple bond is formed from two carbon atoms. And this is the energy that is released when two CH single bonds are formed from uh, the constituent atoms. So, the final value comes out to be 232800 kilo joule per kilo mole. This is the energy that is contained in the bonds. Okay? And you can see that this is reasonably close to the enthalpy of formation of acetylene, which is listed at 226736 kilojoule per k mole. Okay? So, you can see that uh, energy contained in the bonds accounts for most of the energy uh, that is required in forming the uh, species from its constituent elements. Okay? Accurate measurements and values are available, but this procedure although it is slightly less accurate than the actual values, indicates the nature of H of 0. Okay? So, this shows that H of 0 is largely or the contribution to H of 0 comes largely from the uh, bonds that make up the species. Okay? That is the important takeaway from this example. I will, I will let you work out the, uh, uh, the bond energy contained in uh, ethylene C2H4 and compare with the book value or literature value. Okay, so, now we are in a position to uh, carry out first law analysis of combustion systems. So, the most important uh, change uh, that we are seeing here is the definition of uh, is our uh, uh, is our understanding of 
the specific enthalpy of species. So far, we had uh, basically so far we had neglected uh, HF. So basically, we had uh, neglected HF so far, and we had said that uh, the specific enthalpy of uh, species is simply its sensible enthalpy. So the um, uh, the modification that we are making now is that the specific in, is that the enthalpy of formation has to be accounted for, and we will account for that in our um, uh, in our expressions and calculations. But the modification to the energy equation or SFE that we derive is uh, is nil. So there is no modification to the energy equation that we derived. Okay. So whatever we had. Um, uh, we had called enthalpy in our uh, steady flow energy equation is still enthalpy. The only difference is the expression that we use for calculating the enthalpy. So, in the case of gases, we said that enthalpy was equal to the, uh, so we said enthalpy was equal to the sensible enthalpy. Now, we are saying enthalpy is enthalpy of formation plus sensible enthalpy. So, only the expression for calculating enthalpy has changed, not the terms. Uh, that were uh, uh, you know that uh, had enthalpy appearing in them. Okay, that's why I said the definition of enthalpy is still h equal to u plus pv. Nothing has changed. Okay, that still holds.